Hi, today we've got Constantin Klyagin from Redworks. I appreciate you joining me today. Well, uh, glad to be here with you today. For sure. So Constantin, tell me a little bit about yourself and tell me a little bit about your company, Redwork, and what it's all about. All right. So I'm uh, presently, I'm the CEO and founder of okay. Redwork, the software development agency. Uh, we've been around for over uh, 12 years on the okay. market. Uh, we have uh, multiple um, complex projects and SaaS systems on our portfolio. And um, well, when it started 12 years ago, I wanted to build an organization that is capable of uh, addressing every step of the software product development lifecycle, mm -hmm. which means that uh, we, could, uh, we should be able to start with the requirements, then uh, write um, technical specifications, do architecture, uh, provide UI and UX uh, for the product, uh, develop it, test it, put it into production, production and maintain it. Wow. And, uh, you know, I, I did a little bit of digging in your website before our interview today. It sounds like you cover a lot of different technologies, right? Well, we do, uh, we do have quite a wide uh, technology stack. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, in order to be able to build a, SaaS, a modern SaaS application, you have to uh, possess knowledge in the backend part to be able to implement the business logic. Um, then you also have to uh, know the front end technology so that you can build the web front end part, typically responsive web. Okay. Then uh, uh, there's also a need for mobile technologies knowledge so that there are uh, mobile apps attached to that. And sometimes if you are talking about PaaS, like platform as a service, then you should also be able to design and implement an API for third party developers. Yep. Yep. Wow. So highly, highly sophisticated, uh, you know, agency that you're running over there. How big is the agency as it stands today? Uh, was it? H how many people are actually working at your company? Uh, well, nowadays we are almost 50 people. Right. So we have two offices, uh, both in Ukraine, in the okay. uh, capital city, in Kiev, and in Zaporozhye, which okay. is 500 kilometers south from yep. Kiev. So almost 50 people, and uh, like covering all of those roles that I described, business yep. analysts, UI, UX designers, developers, yep. UA yep. engineers, DevOps, uh, CS admins, and so. Excellent, excellent. So talk to me, I mean, I, I understand, you know, you certainly offer a lot um, to potential customers in terms of just handling their, you know, online needs, essentially. So tell me a little bit about, you know, differentiation points outside of the vast technologies that you offer. What are some of the other differentiators that your company offers that other companies necessarily can't bring to the table? Well, from what I know about the, the outsourcing, so to say, uh, like software development outsourcing landscape is uh, that uh, many of businesses, many businesses practice uh, a very simple business model that is our Stefan. So their only role is like giving uh, a person, a developer, a desk, a chair, an internet connection, saying this guy on Skype is now your boss. <laughs> we don't do that, right? I'm a software engineer myself. I wrote my first program when I was eight years old and ever yeah. since I wanted to build a software development company. Yeah. And uh, now that I have one, I find this business model extremely boring. It's, <laughs> it, there's no value absolutely that you uh, right. bring to the table, right, with this approach. Right. So what we do, we take away a lot of pain from our customers, micromanaging developers, right? Yeah. So we really stand ups with them. We, we take care of all the communication, quality assurance and everything internally so that they, they can just sit back, relax and, uh, uh, and wait till the deadline that we commit to, to have their product or a functionality in the product developed. Yeah, no, I think that's a great way to put it. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's very interesting because when people actually hire you, they're essentially hiring, you know, your people, right? And so the quality of your people is something I'd like to learn a little bit more about. Um, because essentially that's what they're transacting on. And so are they all as well-spoken as you and as thoughtful as you? Or to talk to me a little bit about you know, the quality of people that work at your place. Well, we have a whole uh, HR department and a uh, few recruiters uh, working for us in-house so, so that we make sure that we only uh, employ people who are really capable of doing the job. Also, if, that, if that's a customer-facing uh, role, then we also check their English uh, knowledge 
And if those are technical people, we certainly uh, do some in-depth uh, um, analysis and, uh, uh, and checking of their uh, uh, skills and uh, their track record. Right. So this is very important for us. Uh, another thing is that uh, since we are based in Ukraine, uh, there is a good school and a lot of talent. Uh, and like pretty much every developer who works for us has, holds a, at least a master's degree in computer science right. or applied mathematics like myself. Yeah. Yeah. So that your, your corporate culture that, hey, not to just connect an internet connection uh, to a computer and just be a dedicated developer is something that... I would presume the rest of your team believes in as well. I mean, they're essentially really, you know, taking your leadership and applying, you know, your business value proposition that you offer your clients and potential clients, I would presume permeates throughout the organization, correct? Well, of course, yes. So we, what we also sell besides our knowledge is our process. And mm -hmm. this process is very well defined and also yeah. fine tuned over the years. And we know how to handle specific situations yeah. properly and uh, in the most efficient manner. And um, like starting with the, with the issue or a development task life cycle from, from its uh, specification and then discovery with the customer if it's, if it's under specified right. to, to its implementation, testing, checking against the initial requirements, testing it for bugs, deploy it on it live. So it's, it's all well-defined and documented how it should work. Right. Uh, so what we sell essentially is obviously not in individual people, but right. uh, managed teams that are complemented with the uh, project uh, manager and QA. So that it's, it's like a self, uh, self right. unit that can act as a part of another team. We yeah. also have cases of integration into ongoing development or as a separate uh, development unit. And we also have examples like that when uh, a customer didn't have a single uh, technical person on site, but uh, they used our technical skills to, uh, for, to develop their uh, requirements, uh, up to their requirements in, on an ongoing basis. Okay, very cool. So talk to me a little bit about your pricing. You know, I, and, and I understand, you know, it certainly depends on the needs of the client or potential client, right? But Talk to me a little bit about, is it an hourly rate? And if it is, you know, what does that look like generally? Um, and then talk to me about a particular case study that maybe you worked for somebody and then give me a price tag and timeline attached to it. Well, <laughs> well our pricing, I would say that is market average. And uh, we, we, we charge uh, based on the hourly rates. So in the end of each month, our customers get a time report uh, outlining uh, exactly who worked on what and for how long uh, and, uh, and when. And based on uh, uh, those time reports, we also uh, send our invoices, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, a good case study. So, so how much well, is the price? What is the hourly rate that you apply today for? And, and I'm, you know, give me an idea, give me a range. A range would be between thirty and fifty dollars an hour okay. for, for developments, and between maybe fifteen and uh, twenty-five dollars an hour for uh, quality assurance. Okay, for QA. All right, mm -hmm. and uh, any I, I mean, we can we can cover a case study if you like, or I can just keep moving. You know, whatever you prefer. Well, of course, we can uh, we can cover a case study, but uh, I'm just trying to ponder which could be considered a uh, one-off uh, project that. Um, Mm, well, all right, all right. There is a good case study. So uh, there is a, there used to be a startup in Berlin, in Germany, which uh, which was basically something like Handy.com, I believe it's called in in, in the US, right? Huh? That's uh, that you used to uh, to order a house cleaning service, right? Right. Uh, so uh, there was a startup like that in Berlin, very successful startup, one of the uh, Berlin uh, like best success stories because uh, they made an exit through being uh, through acquisition they got acquired by uh, rocket internet's help in the air okay. which is uh, uh which is uh, like a so so solid company okay. especially in the same uh, domain so uh, before being acquired they needed an app for their cleaners which would run smoothly on all the all possible Android devices, right? On the cheapest, uh, I don't know, um, um, you know, Android uh, phones. Yeah. Because that's what cleaners have. They they don't have an iPhone. They normally have a Huawei or 
something like that. Okay. So, um, uh, so what we did, um, we created an app for them. Yep. Uh, we came up with the uh, with the uh, UX and UIs that are easy to understand for mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for cleaning ladies. Yep. And uh, what we did, we implemented it. And uh, I think it was a part of, uh, this is how we contributed to, uh, to their success and to, into their exit. Right. And what did it cost them? Uh, the app was not actually that, that expensive. I think it was uh, 5,000 uh, euros. Okay. Yeah, very reasonable. I mean, from, you know, again, that's just me saying that, but it sounds like a very, very fair square deal. Um, what's the biggest complaint? you hear from your clients? Uh, the biggest complaint is, uh, <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, and it happens a lot in uh, custom work that uh, you are not able to deliver up to the initial estimates because there is some scope creep and some, um, uh, some changes in, uh, in the specification that occur during the de development process. And, um, and uh, this is uh, when it comes to our project managers uh, that they have to manage our customers' expectations. Got it. Um, Got it. Yeah, I can see that happening. Um, you know, once you start with a project, a customer always wants more. <laughs> you know, there's always, oh, well, I didn't think of that. I think, well, now I want this, but then I want it at the same rate that we originally talked about. It doesn't yeah, always yeah. work I that way. Put in all the, uh, all the goods, all the weight, into the uh, last car of a living train. Right. <laughs> and this, all is, right. this is, this all is right. why we dropped all the fix, uh, fixed quotes uh, about like three or five years ago because we, we couldn't handle it anymore. Sure. Nowadays sure. we just give a range and saying that every change yeah. in, the, in the requirements has to go through a certain process. Yeah. We only assess the scope that we have available right now. Okay, makes sense. So where do you see the company in two, three years from now? Well, growing, uh, more fun to work at, uh, a lot of happy customers. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. So, but but same set of technologies, um, same philosophy. Obviously, um, do do you see any type of a need that you're seeing from your customers right now that they're asking for more? Whether it's mobile, um, you know, I, I'm not sure what you're seeing. Are you seeing a trend in any one particular type of a requirement that you think will expand over the next two three years? Well, I think uh, a lot of people are uh, trying to apply machine learning and AI in their projects. That is clear. Also, augmented reality is a, is a big thing. So if you do mobile, it's good to, to know a few technologies that let you uh, do that. Yep. And Very cool. Very cool. Well, if somebody's, you know, we, we definitely, you know, drive traffic to our website where people are looking for, you know, um, developers. And so... I think, uh, you know, it'd be, uh, if I was looking for a company um, from a development perspective, I would definitely want to at least talk to you just to get an idea of what type of a cost I'm dealing with and what type of timeline I'm dealing with. And so I would highly recommend our visitors to at least reach out to you and, and see if it's a good fit. I mean, I've talked to a lot of agencies over 16 years and uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's tough to make it work when somebody's offshore, but then you always get a gut instinct that, hey, this gentleman on the other side actually knows what he's talking about. And so that's kind of like the gut that I'm getting right now, the feel. So you. I'm a, you know, I would highly recommend people at least talk to you to get, get, get some feedback in terms of their project, you know, and then, and then they can make their own decision. So how does somebody get a hold of you? What's the best way? Well, the best way is to submit uh, some information about the project through our website. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are also very, so we, we try to maintain very um, informal uh, yeah. contact with our customers. And many of them are my personal friends or friends yeah. of my team uh, that they become after yeah. starting working with us. And uh, so they can talk directly to me. Uh, okay. all, all of my contacts are in my LinkedIn profile. Okay. They can talk to my sales team. They can easily be uh, in contact with my uh, project management team. Yeah. You know, Okay, and how quickly does it take for somebody to go ahead and uh, get a quote from you? Well, normally we provide high-level quotes within uh, maybe two, three days okay. uh, after receiving uh, estimations. Okay. Uh, sorry. And normally they come uh, as a, as a we, we send them as a range, like mm -hmm. from this much to this much, depending on one, two, three. Correct. And 
this gives people a feeling like if uh, if it fits their budget or sure. they want to go ahead with us. And so we also get a lot of inquiries through our website because we've been around for a long time and we have uh, yeah. our departments making sure that uh, we are visible. And, uh, okay. And the website is redwork.com, R-E-D-W-E-R-K.com, yes. correct? Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Well, Constant, thanks so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Jim.